Welcome to whiskey.com where fine spirits meet. My name is Lüning, Horst Lüning. I'm the master taste of whiskey.com and today we have a experiment here on my cask. Uh, these are samples from four different casks I received from a, yeah, a Bavarian uh, malt whiskey distillery located uh, yeah, in the Alps in the south of Munich. And uh, well, the first one is a American white oak cask which has a crocodile toast. What's a crocodile toast? Well, uh, American standard barrels from American white oak are at first toasted and then flamed uh, to prepare the inside of the cask uh, well with a charcoal layer. And this charcoal layer has two influences. One is it is an, a very good filter and it filters sharp substances out of the raw whiskey and uh, it delivers well some complex compounds to the whiskey. Uh, well no smoky flavors. Oh, the smoke is uh, from adding peat to the drying fire of the barley. So this is a, a fresh American white oak cask as it is used for bourbon. So it's no ex-bourbon cask used for scotch whiskey. It's a juvenile fresh cask from American white oak. And in this whiskey was uh, in this cask uh, the raw whiskey was filled at 55% ABV. Why so low? Uh, the Scots typically fill the whiskey cask at 63.5% ABV, uh, which was a, well, I think it was a standardization inside the industry to swap casks between the blenders. So everybody filled uh, with 63.5% and after 10 years they swapped cask uh, 10 years versus 10 years and nobody has to measure how much is in the cask or not. So they all filled at 63.5% and uh, the value inside the cask was the same. Um, and with the time uh, people got used to the taste of this 63.5% first fillage in the cask or fillage in the cask. Um, so nobody dared to change this intensity. But uh, this Slurs distillery, they fill with a lower ABV into the cask to, well, to reduce the amount of uh, compounds out of the cask walls uh, into the whiskey. Otherwise, this whiskey would be intense as a bourbon is, and this was not the, in, or lies not in the intention of the distillery. Um, and here it's a crocodile toast. Well, a crocodile, there had been an alligator toast, wasn't there? Yes, there was. Um, the crocodile toast means there are several grades of charring a cask from the inside. Uh, it's lightly, medium, strong and heavy crocodile. Uh, and if you burn the inside of the cask very strong or heavily, then uh, the charcoal breaks up into well, square uh, pieces where the fibers uh, are broken and this looks like the skin of a crocodile or an alligator. So this is very, very intensely charred uh, cask. It's three years old. Uh, it's uncolored. It's, it's sampled directly from the cask. The second one uh, was matured in European oak. And European oak has a much more intense flavor and if you uh, mature a whiskey very long, for a very long time in a European oak, then you have this, well, this bitterness, this coffee, uh, cocoa notes, very yeah, spicy uh, oaky note in the whiskey. So this is first fill European oak might be quite strong. <clears throat> Oop. Yeah, the cask is not that even. Um, there's a finish in an Oloroso cask, um, also four years old. And this one is lighter than the others. 
Uh, so this might be, well, it's not sad, which was the first cask. It was it's only sad finished in an Oloroso cask. So you don't know what was the first cask. Was this a refill? The Schliss distillery is not that old, but they already have quite a amount of refill casks available. So it might be a refill cask and then going into a sherry cask for a finishing period. But it's quite light. So the finishing period might not be that long. And the last one is again American white oak, but uh, heavy toast. So it's in the grade one to four, it's grade three. So not that intensely charred as the first one, but heavily charred, four years old. <clears throat> if you do a comparison or a selection, which of these whiskies taste best for you, um, then uh, you have to fill your glasses in parallel. Um, most of the people, and myself also, uh, are not able to uh, memorize a taste from one evening to the next. Um, so you can't say, well, I, the first one I taste today and the next tomorrow and, and after four days uh, I decide which one would be the first of my choice or I can uh, build a sequence out of those. Um, no, uh, very few people have, have this yeah, yeah, say photographic memory of tastes. So you have to fill four glasses in parallel and have a sniff on each glass. Uh, but it's difficult uh, to, to taste those whiskies because if you start with the first one, uh, then the last one will be very much influenced by the three in front. So the last one will be a, well, a product of the taste of all first three. So it's not that easy. And uh, well, have a look at the, the taste first. It has a alcoholic note, it's 55% ABV. And it takes a little time to, cut, to go through this alcoholic note. And then there's the oak. There's the spiciness of the oak. And distant caramel is coming up. Very few vanilla. Yeah. The second one was the European oak. Completely different. It's a strong, spicy, rich European oak. Not that smooth, not that mellow as the American white oak is. And the, the caramel, the toffee, very far in the back. And the distillery character close to to none. This is first fill European oak, that's strong, that's heavy. The th third one is the finishing in Oloroso casks. Yeah, and there's sherry, a light sherry note on top. It's not that strong because it's, it's light. It's a light color. The samples aren't colored. It's directly from the cask. In the back there is some distillery character, some fruitiness, but the fruitiness might also come from the Oloroso grapes. Or the grapes used in the Oloroso sherry. But it's only a, a short finishing period. There is some, I think, European oak also present. And the first cask, I have no idea might be refill. 
<clears throat> the first, uh, the fourth one is, I think it's the darkest or close to the darkest, the, uh, the crocodile charis. I think it's a, a little darker. Yeah, and looking from the side, the European oak is dark as well. Yeah. Wonderful. This is a well well balanced. There's the it's the heavily charred grade three. Still an alcoholic note on top, but American white oak, smooth and mellow, accompanied by by caramel and here with these four samples, the first one with the intense vanilla note. Yeah. Um, which is the best for me? Well, it's the fourth one. It's the most harmonic whiskey. And uh, this one I will dilute with a little bit of water at 50%. That's it. Uh, the other ones uh, I will keep for the evening and have some experiments with those. Uh, <clears throat> but here I'm, I'm very interested how this whiskey not develops with water. It still keeps it keeps its harmony, the balance. There's more fruitiness from the, the, from the distillery character and the American white oak, well balanced. The toffee is reducing a little bit, but vanilla is still strong. Well, it's quite young, four years old. Spicy, intense. Um, a professional would never taste the whiskey. Typically, those whiskies are put in a row um, and then sampled in 20 minutes and then your nose is full and you have to have a, a gap an hourly gap before you start the, the next, next series. Uh, and tasting, well, if you uh, take these samples in your mouth and, and even if you spit it, uh, your taste buds will be influenced by the intense aromas of the whiskey. So they will all mix up against each other. So uh, you can't taste all those in a row. A private will do that, never spoil a drop, uh, but a professional would just smell on the glasses and decide on the nose. And prior to bottling, well, you have to sample, you have to taste and you have to figure out which ABV will be the best uh, to this whiskey. Probably there is a uh, a corporate guideline <laughs> and we all fill our whiskies with 40% ABV, uh, 46 would be better. Uh, but you have to decide uh, how much you would re reduce to drinking strength uh, for not, well, harming the character of the whiskey. Hope that helps you uh, to make up your mind uh, how whiskies, well, mature in different casks. Uh, I said a few things uh, to these whiskies. There is, of course, a lot, a lot more. And uh, here in front of the camera, I'm afraid you can't smell with me. And those samples are individual samples, so you can't go and buy. Uh, but I suggest that you try to sample uh, the whiskies I taste here in front of the, of the camera in reality at home so that you can 
make up your mind how my uh, talk about the whiskey uh, reflects in your, well, taste areas in your brain. Whoa. Yeah. Thank you for watching. There's more to come. Stay tuned and feel free to share this video with your friends.